Okay, let's look at an example of nodal analysis using voltage sources. And in this case, I've drawn an interesting little circuit that has two voltage sources in it, one that's dependent and one that's independent. And we want to solve for this voltage Vx. And this is a nice example because this illustrates a whole lot of the things we've been talking about, but we're kind of putting them together into a single problem so you can see how it works. So in this case, I've got one, two, three, four essential nodes. And although all four essential nodes have three branches connected to them, the one on the bottom is really a good choice, the best choice for ground. And the reason for that is if I choose that bottom node, it means that this essential node and this essential node are going to be defined by those two voltage sources. So in this case, this is 12 volts connected to ground. This is 4VX. So both of these are defined voltages. And the interesting part is that's also true even for the dependent voltage source. We do not know what VX is, but we do know that voltage must be 4VX because of that dependent source being connected to ground. So because both of those nodes are defined, that makes our problem a lot simpler. We really only have one undefined node voltage here in the center node. That's all that's left. And in this case, let's go ahead and let's write our nodal equations based on that single node. So let's first go through and let's pick our current directions. So in this case, I'll pick a current going this direction through the 20 ohm resistor, going down through the 10 ohm resistor. And notice how Vx is already defined for the problem. Why fight it? Since this voltage polarity already exists because the problem gives it, I'm just going to define the current using the pass assign convention. No point in fighting a quantity or a polarity or a current direction that's already on the diagram. Okay, so given this, I can now go through. I can add my polarities of the voltage drops across those resistors. Now, in addition, I want to point out that since I've got two voltage sources here, I need to define the unknown currents through them. So in this case, I'm going to call this current I1. I'm going to call this current I2. Okay, let's solve and let's find the value of Vx. So in this case, what do we need to solve this? If I want to find Va, I do not need the two defined voltages. I don't need the KCL equations at those nodes. I can write the equation strictly for Va. So let's do that. So in this case, for the Va node, Va minus 4Vx over 20 plus VA over 10 plus VA minus 12 over 8 is equal to 0. That's the only KCL equation we need to solve for VA. But it's still not enough because I've got a second variable, VX. So what else do I need? I've got a dependent source. Therefore, I need a dependent source variable. What is Vx? Vx by inspection is Va minus 12. Now I've got two equations, two unknowns, and I can solve. And if I do that, what I will get is that Va is equal to minus 12 volts and Vx is equal to minus 24 volts. And there's the answer. Now, you note, I did not need a KCL equation for those two defined nodes. But could I write one? Sure, absolutely. Let's write a couple of optional KCL equations. at defined nodes. So for the 4VX node, 
I've got that VA minus 4VX over 20. plus 3 plus I1 is equal to 0. So here I now finally use that 3 amp source because I defined it at this node. That current must be equal to that plus that. What about the 12 volt node? For the 12 volt node, VA minus 12 over 8 plus 3 going in must be equal to I2 going out. And you know what? I just realized I made a mistake on that 4VX equation. VA minus 4VX over 20 is equal to I1 plus 3 amps. See how easy it is to make those kinds of mistakes? Very, very common. So here you see how just not looking, not thinking, what goes in must come out. Always double check your equations. Okay? So here are my equations. I can now solve for these. And if I do so, We can add these equations. What do we get? Two more equations, but also two more unknown variables. So I can absolutely add those two equations but it will not change the answer for VA and VX one bit. All I'll do is by adding those two equations, it tells me the values of I1 and I2. So once again, to reiterate a point I made before, if you are going to write a KCL equation at a defined node, you must include the current flowing through the voltage source. Very important principle. These KCL equations are optional, but if you choose to use them, you've got to remember to include those two currents. What is one of the most common mistakes people make when they're writing problems, doing nodal analysis problems like this? They will write these equations, they'll correctly write those two equations, then they'll decide to add these two equations, and then guess what they forget to do? They forget to include the currents in the voltage sources. So I've seen students, they'll say this current's equal to that current, and this current plus this current's equal to zero. And the problem is, is they can't solve it. Mathematical will not give them an answer because now they have an inconsistent set of equations. So if you ever get in a situation where you write equations and mathematical will not solve, what that means is you have made some error in an equation that makes it mathematically inconsistent where Mathematica cannot find a solution. So that's a perfect example. You've got to include I1 and I2. You have to include the currents in the voltage sources to correctly write that KCL equation. Every branch must have a current. Don't forget that. Now one last thing with this problem. What about the constraints? I have two voltage sources. Remember I said voltage sources need a current variable, they need a constraint. Where's the constraint? Right there in the schematic. 12 minus 0 is 12. 4VX minus 0 is 4VX. 
I just wrote it right there. So the constraints are still there for each voltage source. I'm just putting them directly in the schematic, right there in the circuit. So this kind of incorporates a lot of different shortcuts all at once. But here you can see now that you can actually go through and solve an entire circuit and if you intelligently pick the ground, you can quite often use voltage sources to define and eliminate several of the, of the uh, node voltages and when, because they'll be defined, you don't need to actually write equations for them. All right, so nice little example and let's now go and finally to wrap this section up, let's look at another situation where we have a voltage source in a circuit that spans two undefined nodes. Let's look at that next time.